Hey guys, hope you've been a great day today. It is Friday. Happy Friday morning to you. I hope that your morning is going well. You made it. It's Friday. We are here. <sighs> Did anybody else feel like it was a long week? For myself, it was one of those weeks where I feel like I was I had a little bit more going on, so I was taking a lot of extra time making sure I do that for my own sanity. <laughs> today and just getting the things that I wanted to get done and taking some breaks and all those wonderful things and so we had a we had a really good week a good week of relaxing I feel good we had yesterday we had that power flicker in the morning which is weird and then by the end of the night our water our um I don't even know what you call it the main water thing outside it's different because Florida stuff is outside versus inside which is weird but um just the way we weird because ours was always in the house so our water anyway it was a seal it was a seal that was broken underwater so it was shooting water out everywhere i'm like awesome so thankfully um you know most things you have to deliver or you have to go to the store which nobody has those or you have to call a repairman so i'm thankful that um, my husband has some tools and some equipment so we were able to make a seal which was really nice and then um, use that for our water so it stopped the water so last night turned into like i went swimming it was great i was out there for about two hours and then came in and like the dishes, I left the dishwasher not on because I was like, oh, I'll just run it later tonight. Usually I start it right away. And so then I came in and it was like, then the water was off and I was like, oh, what does that actually mean? And so in real, and it was gonna be like today, it was gonna be fixed. And so I was like, all right, so what do I do? Do I get up and make food? You know, it's like your whole life is at a standstill without water because you need water. It's kind of like no power. What do you do? <laughs> so I'm like, okay, so we've been using up all of our water. I call it our, hurricane water because I bought a ton way too much well maybe not way too much if you need it but I bought a bunch last year and so I've been trying to use it up because I bought the thinner bottles not necessarily the, I know water doesn't expire but the thinner ones what they do is they, they don't expire sure you can drink probably drink it for 20 years but like the plastic breaks down so the bottles sometimes like squish in and they shoot water out I've had that happen in the mountains and so I don't like certain water brands bottle brands out of my keeping for years but certain ones I realized that it's not all of them but like in that whole packet you'll have you know three or four that just explode like that and then you have a mess so I try to use them up so we had a few waters so I was over here <laughs> what do we have we had the chicken and the pasta and it was like buffalo sauce and a fettuccine and so I'm like washing in the sink here with I had a little bit of water left that was in the tank and then uh, rinsing it with a bottle of water and so I got all that washed and I was like <sighs> this is not going to be very fun and then uh, but Greg stayed up he got it working and fixed it which was really nice and so I woke up today to wonderful water so I'm like thank you so I've got my washer going right now the dishwasher I just ran through a rinse cycle so I could get the yucky remains of food out there but dishes are done now because I did them all by hand yesterday <laughs> and then I'm like I, but we were so tired because we went to bed so late and I'm like I'm a little slow moving today so but I was sitting last night while I was, he was fixing it I was looking and I saw that Becky from One Acre Homestead she made what I'm going to make today donuts i'm like all right she's gone before me she's done it so i have been last week when i did my deep frying stuff we like want to do all this fun little vacation foods fun like that we found what we love what we don't love which is beautiful i mean we loved them all mind you but like found like what's our favorite so now we can just take and make corn dogs one day or the cuban egg rolls one day it was just more of the let's have a whole bunch everybody taste some try it and we'll go from there so the one thing i wanted to do was donuts that's something i wanted to make and i was like that was just way too much in one day and so that is what i'm going to do today my goal is donuts i want to make a few varieties um that i want to have i'm in, i'm inspired by tim hortons like tim hortons to me is the best donut coffee place in the world it beats starbucks starbucks is good for like like powering through really good caffeine but a tim hortons mm, so good and tim hortons ice cap you can't even touch it and, and but there's none down here there's none down here with all the transplants down to florida they've got all kinds of food you've got almost every food representative but no tim hortons from canada <laughs> so, and i know canadians come down here because i see their license plate and i think i saw an article where they were going to put one in I don't know it was like two years ago but they haven't they haven't put that in it's not here but like you know two hours from here i'm like oh i would drive two hours to go to tim hortons <laughs> but it's so good i love love going back to michigan and you go in there you get yourself a box of timbits and you get yourself a iced cappuccino mm, it's the best thing ever so their donuts amazing i think amazing so i'm going to try some donuts today i thought i'm going to be inspired to make some donuts from there i'm going to do a yeast one we're going to do an old-fashioned one i'm going to do a fritter apple fritter hello and then um, a double chocolate glaze. I think it's gonna be like a cakey donut from what 
I was recalling and remembering and looking up. So I'm gonna do that and then we have to do dinner tonight. So tonight we're gonna do um, egg rolls because I bought all those egg roll wrappers and I've got sausage from yesterday and I've got cabbage. So I'm like, let's do egg rolls and let's do ramen. Ramen simple, we'll do like a ramen-y egg roll kind of night. And I'm good with that. Easy, easy night. It's heading into the weekend for the Easter weekend. And so usually today I would make a ton of food for our Easter weekend dinner and I don't have to. That's the beautiful thing is I don't because we are going away. So that's a good thing. So I don't even have to worry about that. Um, I might film some, might make what we do. We'll see how life goes. But for today it's donuts and it's egg rolls and ramen. We can do those things. So I am gonna be ready for a good day. I'm ready for an amazing day. I'm starting on coffee. What is my encouragement to you today? Let me look. It comes from Romans chapter eight, verses 38 and 39. I wanna read it so I don't mess it up. It says, for I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This might be needed for somebody that maybe is just not feeling very loved. Like how does, like what does it feel like to know that you are loved? God's love for you is like unfailing, like nothing can separate that. People will let you down. Oh, they will, they will. Important people, people that shouldn't let you down, let you down <laughs> because they're humans, but God will never let you down. His unfailing love for you is forever and that is a beautiful, beautiful reminder. Just remind yourself that you are loved. And sometimes we need that like in our daily life, just when we're feeling down. Maybe you're feeling a little like, what about me? What about me? Woe is me. Or, you know, and those are, you don't want to get stuck in those places. You don't want to get stuck in those places in your life. And it's, it's easy to go there. It's easy to go there. It's easy to start walking and start thinking about, what about me? What about me? And all those things in our own life. And you have to remember that, you know what? God loves you. God loves you and you are not alone. He is here with you. He is never gonna leave you nor forsake you. Just remember his love is so big for you. Know that you're loved today. Even if you don't feel like it, we don't go by feelings. Feelings are like fickle. They'll change day to day. They change with hormones. They change with sunshine and rain. They change with people and what they say, what you hear, depends on the situation, everything changes. But God's love never changes for you. He always loves you. So, are you ready for a great day? I'm ready for a great day. All right, let's get making donuts. Let's go. So the first one I'm going to do is the yeast donuts because they have to rise up and, you know, get full and all that good stuff. It's going to take some time. So I thought, let me get that dough together first. But, but there is a problem. Okay, I have a mixer. I've had my mixer for a long time, years. Years and years and years and years. The mixer came with a dough hook, the little, like an egg, what is it called? A whisker and the regular mixer. Okay, so when you're storing those big things, and you have a house that doesn't have a lot of room, like our mountain house didn't have a lot of space, to store all those extra attachments, it's one of those things where you're like, hmm, do I even need this? Huh, do I even need this? So I'm guilty of getting rid of things like many times, many times, because there's no space. So that happens, and I know that happens for a lot of people that doesn't have a lot of space. Okay, so, you, so I looked at my, I almost got rid of my whisker because I'm like, oh, I'll never whisk that. I have a hand whisk. So, but I kept it. Thank goodness. I moved here and realized I kept it. But the dough hook, I'm like, I'll never mix dough in my mixer because I always mix it by hand. Why would I ever need to mix it in a mixer? Donuts are good to mix in a mixer. So <laughs> I don't have my dough hook. So I'm like, hmm, I could mix it by hand. I could do that, but I have other things to do. So I thought, why don't I do try something else? So you know what I've got? I've got my bread machine. Why can't you mix it in your bread machine? You may be able to. I think it's the big batch from what I remember. Um, my I put my pizza dough in there and I think it was six cups of flour and it was a lot and so it was really full so I'm just gonna have to be careful doing it but then everything can kind of sit in there and do its thing so I'm gonna I put it in there and if I gotta pull it out I can pull it out and put it in my a bowl and mix it by hand so I am using Laura in the kitchen she's wonderful this is her recipe from 10 years ago 10 years ago she's been doing YouTube she's like great you love I love seeing people in channels like you've seen Laura in the kitchen right Laura in the kitchen her she's doing great amazing channel she's been on YouTube for 10 years more than 10 years more than 10 years I'm like that's a long time to stay committed to doing YouTube videos right most people don't last for a few years because you know YouTube <laughs> so I'm gonna follow her recipe for her glazed donuts so what I did is I've got milk right here and she used whole milk. I used my lactose-free milk in here. And then what I did is I heated it to 110 degrees and I put in a teaspoon of sugar and two packages of yeast and it's proofed. It's all ready here. So now in the mixer right here, we're going to add in here. We're going to add, I'm going to mix it in here. We're going to add sugar. Let's see what it's going to go back and forth here. We are going to be adding a third cup of sugar. 
So we're gonna put this in the bread machine and let it do its work. So I put sugar in here and then I've got a quarter cup of melted butter and a quarter cup of melted shortening in there and then it's two eggs. And then I'm gonna add the yeast mixture and we're gonna turn it on. Let's see, I think it should start right. We want, we'll just do it and go. let that mix up and then I'm gonna start adding my flour to it that's it they you do add a pinch of salt but I'm not adding a pinch of salt because my butter is salted already so I don't want to um, you know, ruin that so it's gonna be five cups of flour in here Okay, give it some gray sense. That's my dough hook. I'm doing three in there. I'm gonna add two more into there. Now the mixer would do this way quicker, but you know, you throw away your dough hook. You do it by hand too, but look at there's three. So this is four. So I'll just have to do one more. There's my five cups of flour. Okay, first batch is gonna be in there doing a sink. Now we're on to something else. Sorry, we don't do the same thing in all the video here. We are doing real life. So this is my real life. I have to, I can make donuts, but I also have to make food for my family today. So they really enjoyed the egg roll. That was something everybody really enjoyed. So I am going to, it's gonna be a lot of sausage, isn't this? I mean, I'm just thinking that's a lot, but that's okay. You can always make more. So I'm going to cook, this is my sausage I made yesterday. I left one out. So what I'm gonna do is cook this and I'm gonna make egg rolls because that is something when I do my deep frying we're gonna do it all at one time so all the donut recipes I'm just gonna make those and then like I'm gonna do apple fridge with that but that's just a quick mix up and then you fry it so you don't have to like let it sit the yeast one why is that it shouldn't the yeast one is the one that has to sit for a few hours so if that can do its thing and sit and then um, we can mix our other batters up. So the egg rolls are one, another thing I wanna let sit. Now I made those last time, we're learning. This is all a learning process, trying new skills, all those good things. You're never too old to learn new skills. No, you're not. We always did the egg rolls and we just did them in the air fryer. That worked good, but now that we have the deep fryer, oh my goodness, it tastes like takeout Chinese. <laughs> so I don't think I'll do air fryer if I can do takeout Chinese. If I want to, if we're gonna be having these all the time, then yes, maybe, but we don't. It's gonna be like a treat today, having it with dinner, along with, you know, the donuts. So my egg rolls last time, I followed the recipe and they blanched everything. And then um, a couple said that you don't really need to do that. So I'm thinking I'm gonna cook this over here and then I'll add all my spices that I do. And then my, I'll do the sh shredded cabbage and carrot and I will just cook it for like a few seconds. Last time they had me blanch it and squeeze out a ton of water. So I'm thinking, why don't I um, just, I'll see, we'll see if we can just cook it and just see if we can get the water out. See if it'll be the same results versus like squeezing it and drying it. But I know it has to kind of sit so you can get a lot of liquid out. So that's good. So we will work on that. This is gonna fry here, do its thing. I have to do my beans. I check my beans, I put these in the refrigerator. These need to be ground up in my food processor because this was yesterday and I did not get to them and I was like, you know what, put them in the refrigerator. So here is the beans. What I'm gonna do with these is take them and just put them in the food processor, blend them up, put them in a container. That is refried beans. And then just blend these up, real simple. Perfect. These taste a little bit better with, the, I never add, I've never added, I don't think I've ever, I can't say never because someone will find a video where I did. I don't remember ever adding salt normally to these. So usually I just do them regular and that's how we eat them. But I know it is better with a little bit of salt. So I'm gonna pour these in here. Wash my dishes so I can get those going. This is my sausage cooking. Last time I used ground chicken and that was really good too, but I'm just gonna, I did sausage. Sausage is good too. So I'm gonna add salt and pepper to this. Do like a good pinch on each and then I'm gonna add some soy sauce. Sausage definitely has more grease in it. <laughs> so it's gonna have to be drained. I'm gonna add ginger. I have this ginger paste, we like that. And then I'm supposed to add garlic to this, but I was like, where's the garlic at? I forgot that I bought all that frozen garlic. 
So I need to grind this up. I mixed it with onions is what I did last time and pureed it, but I didn't do any just garlic. So I probably, need, I saw in Baldi they have garlic pucks. So I probably need to do something like that. I mean, I don't usually too much need something without onion with the garlic, but this way I'll just grind mine up in my cabbage, I guess I'll just do that. Can I put them in the food processor without? Let me actually, let's see if we can do it frozen. Let's, let's do that, hold on. Let's see if the food processor will handle three little tiny garlics. Okay, it did. All right. It did. Not all tiny mints, but for the most part, I'll chop up. So I need to do some garlic pucks, I think. That would be something good to add to my list. Remind myself here, Amy. Better dead. So this will be good. Those will be a little bit bigger chunks. I'm okay with that. They will blend all in there. So I'm gonna cook this meat here, let this kind of do its thing, and I'm gonna take, I rinsed my cabbage, I've got some carrots, and I've got celery, I'm gonna put it in the food processor and grind it up. So I think I'm just gonna cook this, and then um, make sure I get out all that liquid, and then do the cabbage in here for a few minutes, and then I'll just let everything kind of sit. Okay, that meat smells delicious. So I'm gonna move, should I move you over here? What I'm gonna do now, I'm debating because after looking up the recipe, I wanted to double check on it. Like, the reason why you blanch the cabbage is because it makes it that bright green. I'm afraid if I put it in that pan, is it gonna make it too soggy? I don't know, Some I remember someone read the comments, I didn't say it, but she said that she just mixed it in there and it was fine. So I'm thinking, let me take my meat out of there and then maybe I'll try to fry it with a little bit, of, put a little bit of water in there and kind of steam it. I don't know. Let's do that versus doing the big giant water because I feel like that was a little much, but maybe that's what I need to do. This is the part where you're like, what do you do? So let me try the frying. We'll see if it works because you do want that bright color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put cabbage in here. I'm going to put some more garlic in there, um, carrot, and then I went up to my handy trusty garden. <laughs> My garden, you can see me walk in my garden getting my herbs, um, green onions. I'm excited for my little pot. I'm gonna get a trellis for it. And my thought is the trellis, will, the cucumbers will go up the trellis. The tomatoes obviously will go up because they'll need to be staked up. And then the green onions, they're like a, a root, a bulb, so they would go down in the pot. So I feel like it would be fine on the pot. We'll see, but I cut some of these. So this is a good thing. So I'm gonna put these all in there. We'll grind it up and um, we'll get the meat out of here and then we'll do it right in this pan. So for this, I'm gonna just turn on, put a little bit of water and put the lid on there and just kind of let it steam for just a few minutes. So I let it cook for just a few minutes. Okay, so the problem, now I'm realizing it, is that it's not gonna be cool. So if you blanch it, obviously it's gonna be cold water to stay cool. So mine, I just, I just put it on this pan right here. I'm gonna put this in my refrigerator right now because I'm not gonna do this right this second. And then I'll just kind of bl I'll blotch it with a paper towel to get out most liquid, but it's good. Then we'll start on some more donuts. So we've got our um, egg roll things. I opened the refrigerator. I'm like, ooh, it smells like garlic in here. <laughs> So my yeast batter is almost risen, which is really good in there. That helps make it go a little bit faster. So I'm gonna start making up my other batters because once you get them, I'd rather do them all at once so I can get them fried at the same time so I'm not doing both. And it's nice and cool outside today, so I think it's gonna be a good day. Cooler, cooler, like 63 right now, but I think it's not gonna be like 100, which is gonna be a good thing for frying. So this one is going to be an old-fashioned donut. So I wanna have the yeast one, this is going to be the old-fashioned one. So this one I can just mix it in a bowl here. Let's get all these things up. So I'm going to add a cup of sugar. Let's get one cup of sugar, four teaspoons of baking powder, it's one and a half teaspoons of salt. I'm just going to do one because I have salted butter and then nutmeg. A lot of these have nutmeg. I know like my mom makes meatballs and she puts nutmeg in them too so i think that'll help a little bit so mix this up this is melted butter a quarter cup one cup of milk two eggs
You're gonna add four cups total. So I just added two, mixed in real good. And then I'll do a third here. You wanna mix really well. And you want it soft and sticky, but firm to the touch. Then it says to cover it with plastic wrap and chill it in the refrigerator for about an hour. So I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator. My donuts don't take on the flavor of the, um, the cabbage in the refrigerator. <laughs> the dough is already doubled, so I'm going to um, punch it down. That's nice and spongy. That's a good, you can't even see it. You can't see it, what is it, spongy dough? Look right here, look at that. That's like nice and spongy. Look at that. Ooh, that's a good yeasty dough. Okay, we're gonna let that sit in there for a few more minutes. Let's keep going on the next one. Next one's gonna be an apple fritter. I love a good apple fritter. Love a good apple fritter. Tim Hortons, oh, got it beaten. Um, our Ingalls grocery store in North Carolina had some, and then I loved it when they would deep fry, and then the bottom would be like a little extra crispy. Mm, so I hope I can accomplish that, knowing my new skills at I'm sure I'm sure I can overcook the donut. <laughs> so I'm gonna do this one. The recipe I have here, it has applesauce in it. So, and then I use Granny Smith apples. I don't have Granny Smith, but I remember I cut up some apples. I don't even remember what kind they were. I diced them, threw them in my freezer. So the type of apple I think matters. So what I did is I took some apples out, measured it out, and put some sugar in it. And I'm just gonna kind of heat it up over here. So it's kind of cooked. I don't know. Again, we're all trial and error. So some said if you use a different kind of apple, I don't think these were red delicious, but I could be totally wrong. Could be totally wrong. And they said those kind of usually make too much like a, the dough flavor, so you don't really notice the difference. But you do what you got and what you have. So this is good. So let's mix up in here the rest. So this one is flour. It is one and a half cups of flour. And you add a quarter cup of sugar. Two teaspoons of baking powder. and a half a teaspoon of salt. You add one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. Make sure it's cinnamon. <laughs> and then you mix this up. And then you add two eggs. And that's a third a cup of milk. And it's, ooh. And it's three tablespoons of applesauce. Whisk that up. Okay, I wanted to add the applesauce because sometimes I think of like you can substitute applesauce for oil in a recipe. So I did that. So this is just mixed and then you fold in your apples. I just put like a little bit of sugar in mine. I'm gonna pour these in without the liquid that came off because if you had a fresh apple, it's not, it's not gonna be all gooey, you know, with the liquid. So let's just fold this in. Now the beautiful thing about these donuts is this is the first time doing them. So the yeast one obviously is gonna be a nice doughy. The old fashioned one is gonna be like, you'll be able to cut it out. This one, it's said it's supposed to be gooey because when you drop it, it kind of spreads out. It's not like it has a distinct um, look. So that, I mean, we're gonna try it. So I'm gonna put this, probably should I put it in the refrigerator? I think I can, can I? Can I put it in the refrigerator until I'm ready? Probably can, I'll put it in the refrigerator until I'm ready. Now I'm gonna do another recipe because we're trying all sorts of different kinds because you know what? Some might fail, some might work. That's the key is trying them out and seeing what works best for you. So this one is gonna be a chocolate, um, like a double chocolate one where it's chocolate, gla chocolate glaze. That's what it's called, it's more like a cake batter. So this one has sour cream in it. So I'm hoping I got this all good. So I have to put in my mixer here, it's one and an eighth cups of sugar. and eight cups of sugar, and then you wanna add three tablespoons of butter. And it says you wanna like get that incorporated really good, and then you're gonna end up adding to it five egg yolks and keep scraping it down. And while it's doing that, we're gonna mix up our dry ingredients. And so over here is three and three quarters cups of flour.
This will be one cup of cocoa powder. They add a teaspoon of espresso powder, but she said you do not have to, so I don't have espresso powder. I wish I did, and it's gonna be a tablespoon of baking powder. And the recipe calls for kosher salt, four teaspoons. So I had to Google it and look it up, and they said you can substitute regular salt for it, but you just want to do less. So I'm gonna add two salt. So I'm going to add my eggs to this. And then when that looks like a nice cake, like a nice cakey batter, I'm going to alternate this with the sour cream. Mix. This one said not to go too tough because you want to do this quickly because you don't want gluten to develop. So did I make gluten develop? Because otherwise I make tonas and make them tough. So we're going to see. And this is to put in a greased bowl and cover it with um, plastic wrap put in the fridge for an hour. Okay, my donut dough is getting out of control. It keeps puffing up, so I need to hurry. <laughs> so I'm gonna start making my egg rolls, get those done so we can start making the donuts so I can get outside and deep fry these. So egg rolls, I just took the cabbage here, kind of squeezed out as much liquid as I can. I'm gonna add, let me turn it down here. I'm gonna add all this to it. Hopefully, try not to get the grease in there. That in there. The recipe, they added chicken bouillon. Yep, chicken bouillon, yep, they did. And it was a guy that had a million views, so it's not me and my love for chicken bland. It was somebody else. And then they add a little bit of sugar. And they add salt and pepper to this. And then stir this up. These egg roll wrappers are a lot different in color. They're darker and they look thicker. We'll see, this one's from Walmart. I got Frida's, Frida's egg rolls. So I'm gonna make these, put them on a, um, use the egg to seal them, and then put them on a pan, let them roll out, get that done, and then we'll move on to something else. Okay, so egg rolls are done. So that first package, a lot of them stuck together, like a lot, the next one was a lot more, let's see, I don't know if they're thicker or they were just more flour. Whatever the case, I got them done. So that was good and then I was able to, um, they folded really nice. Learning the technique, that's the key, doing this over and over, you're not gonna be an expert the first time you do it. No, not at all. It's gonna take you a few trial and errors to figure out what works, but um, they worked good. I feel like assembly line, then using the brush of the egg versus your finger. And then um, it's good, those are in the refrigerator. So they'll stay nice and cool. You just didn't want them to touch because then sometimes they stick together and they get a little gooey and then you have holes in them. But they do deep fry, they don't fall apart. I noticed that. So my dough, oh my goodness, this dough, this dough is so out of control. It's so risen fluffy, so hopefully it's good. I'm sure it is. Let it risen up a bunch of times. So look at, that is like some spongy. Look at, look at this dough. 
yeah, that's some dough. That's like out of control dough. So you're gonna put this down here and you're gonna knead this out and then I'm gonna roll it out into, um, what is the thickness? Half inch thickness, half inch. And then I'm gonna use, um, you can use a donut cutter, but I have these ones I got from Timu. These work really good, so I'll figure out my sizes. Make them, and then you're supposed to put it on a parchment paper lined cookie sheet. So what if you don't have parchment paper? Because not everybody has parchment paper. I have wax paper sheets, and sometimes that works too. Um, so I, I could do that, but you know what? This works too, your silicone. I'm just gonna put these on here. That's fine, whatever you have. It does, you don't have to have fancy stuff. You don't have to have fancy stuff for um, things to work. So let me get, get my rolling pin and roll this out. I did get my rolling pin and I did get my, my kids met, um, ruler. I saw that, the company that I get those little spatulas and kitchen things from, they have a rolling pin and it has these little bands you put on the side. So when you roll it, you know how like thick your batter is. I'm like, that's a really good thing, but they were out of stock. So I'll wait till they get back in stock and get those. So let me roll this out and cut out some donuts. don't have the measuring thing, just take your ruler. Now, remember to compensate. The ruler doesn't necessarily end on the side, so just take it, stick it in. You need a half of an inch. So mine is about a line below a half of an inch, but if you look at a ruler, it doesn't start on the end. So you are good. Okay, that's good. Let's cut out, let's see what we're gonna use. We're gonna use the, what's gonna be the perfect size donut? Small donuts or big donuts? Hmm. I like it right here, a donut and a donut. I feel like that's good all right there. Okay, so those are over there. They said to let them rise again. I ain't sure. Let me get a towel. Mine are pretty, pretty risen like. So I'm just gonna set this over top. This will work. Now I'm gonna get my next one done. This is the, what was this one? The old fashioned? It was the old fashioned one, right? The old fashioned cake. I'm <laughs> like, which one is this? So you do the same thing. You just roll it out like dough. It's gonna be not as fluffy, obviously. And then um, I think the key is to keep it cold from what I remember reading. So I'll roll it out and put it on here and then we'll fry them up. Let me get my chocolate one out. We will try this one doing the same thing, rolling it out. Oh, that's nice and spongy. Okay. I need a nice dough. And these yeasty ones, they're already rising up. Oh my goodness. These are like some good donuts. So I need to um, I'll roll these out, do the same thing. It smells like it's funny when you eat a donut, you don't think sour cream is in it, but you can definitely smell the sour cream in the donuts. <laughs> Let's roll these out. Okay, those are good. So the chocolate's a little more gooier. So we'll see. Again, we're trying trial and error. That's what you got to do with these. I'm gonna go and get my deep fryer ready because these yeasty ones are ready to go. They are just, it's nice and warm and toasty here. So it is just rising up, doing really good. And then I'll come back and clean this up while that's heating up. So since I have a whole lot of stuff to fry, like the egg rolls, the, glaze, the yeast donuts, the old fashioned donuts, the chocolate donuts, the apple fritters, I don't think anything has to necessarily be dipped right away. I don't think so. Like, I think, like, I'm gonna do some with cinnamon sugar, probably like the little ball things, just a little bit of each, and then that'll go in there when it's warm. But the rest, I feel like it can sit for a minute and then I can dunk it in the glaze. It's probably better when it's warm, but I feel like it'll be okay. Even if I just heat up the icing, that probably work too. That way I'm not having to do too many things at once because, you know, it's gonna get busy all this time frying fun. So I'm just gonna get out all my pans here that I'm gonna put them on and get some paper towels so I can line them so we can start frying. 
We want to show you the sunshine. It is a gorgeous day outside. Beautiful, beautiful day. So nice and it's breezy. It's only, like I said, in the 70s, but that sun is out. Gorgeous. So I've got the electric fryer here. I like the electric for sure over the gas. I don't like doing it in the house. I don't like oil everywhere. Some people do. I just don't. <laughs> maybe maybe theirs doesn't splatter like, like mine does, but my stove, it does. So this is good. You just set the temperature, let it do its thing. So I'm only doing one side because one side uses a lot of oil. We use, what, two gallons of oil so i'm not going to do this side so i had to make myself a little area here so i will put my tray of uncooked ones here put them when they're done down here use my little chopsticks to flip and then use this i was going to get i was at the store and i was going to get an oil scooper and i'm like this thing worked just fine so I might as well just use that so i just keep it'll tell me when the temperature is ready that's the beautiful thing of it i don't have to do a whole lot so just wait for it to go i've got my thermometer just to check it and great day right, here we go truth be told temperature is definitely where it needs to be here is that, look at that big giant. Oh my goodness. I think I'm only gonna put one in there. Do I put two in there or is that too many? Let's do one, just see how fluffy it is because these things seem to be like so fluffy. Oh my goodness, this is exciting. First time donuts. So the, maybe the yeast ones would be good to make into like real balls instead of just the holes. I don't know, whatever. It's getting brown already. Flip her over. Okay. Look at that. We'll see. I didn't film myself taking them out because I wanted to make sure, like, like how do you know they're cooked to the inside? So, let me see here. They're hot. Oh, yeah. Okay. Look at that. Delicious. They're going to be yummy. Okay, so I've got my next one in here. I'm going to do two big ones and some small ones. This is good. I took my thermometer and then um, checking the internal temperature of it when it's done. It's like 180 degrees inside, so then you know it's cooked. So I think that's good. But these, I mean, it is good. Mine are a little bit darker. Is that a reason why? Are they supposed to be the darker? Maybe that's fine. Maybe it's my oil because my oil isn't brand new fresh. That probably why, right? I mean, look at that. It's beautiful. It's like a delicious. I mean, yeah. Like I can't wait to dip it in something. So look at that. It's nice and squishy. Oh, mm, yummy, yummy. Okay, yummy. I went inside and took one of the piece that I broke off and dipped it in sugar, and I'm like, ooh, that's really yummy. <laughs> So it'll be good to, you know, dunk these and I'm going to do the chocolate frosting and I'll do some, the, like a glaze and I'll do some sugar as well. But great, so just deep frying them away. And then we'll get our egg rolls done after. And then tonight all we do is throw together some ramen. It's a good, easy day today. It's my gap in my fragment weekend because I don't have to gather anything, which is a great thing. <laughs> just enjoy. So let's keep deep frying. Okay, the yeast ones did really good right here. That's the first batch, so I'm gonna just put those in the kitchen and go get the other ones out. All right, next batch, these are the um, old-fashioned ones. Your temperature's nice and hot. Uh, it is, here we go. It says these are supposed to puff right up. Let's see, let's see if that's the case. Stuff like that when they're cooked, so that's good, okay? They do pop up. He's got a weird ankle, sorry. Okay, it did, look at that. I mean, they look good and taste good. They are fluffing right up like they should. So it doesn't take too long for the temperature to keep changing.
these are really good. I went and dipped them in sugar. I'll do all that and show you too. So good. So delicious. So cakey. So we're doing good. I'm going to get calm and while I'm doing this because I'm just sitting here deep frying. So the old fashioned ones are almost done and then I'm going to start on the chocolate ones. Those ones are going in next. And then we'll go in and we'll dip them and try them with all the delicious toppings. I'm going to continue to fry these. I'm also going to go in between and start mixing up my um, top, the sugar toppings like the glaze. I've already got the sugar and cinnamon and do the melted chocolate. What I'm doing for mine is this is semi-sweet chocolate like a baking bar. I'm going to put it in the microwave, melt it, and i got to flip my donuts. been busy. We had Greg come for lunch, showed them everything. They, everybody took a couple donuts and ate them. They're good. So I'm going to get them, these covered, and then I'm going to do my apple fritters because I feel like I need to get these glazed or something here. My chocolate ones, I feel like I need to glaze them, but I'm debating. I only have so many racks to put everything on. So how are we going to do this? What's going to be the best, less dirty way? I know you can put them on cookie sheets, but I only have so many. Hmm. I guess we can just start right here, right? I can do them this way. We'll do the chocolate ones because those will be good as a glaze. And then um, we'll go from there. Definitely have to make more. All I did was put together um, powdered sugar and a little bit of milk. And that's it. I'm going to make I'm definitely going to have to do more here. So just definitely dip. Okay, let's see. Could you do this? Could you put a bunch on a stick in the glaze pot? I need a different size container. That would kind of get some of those off. Hold on, we need to do this better. Okay, that works really good. You can kind of sit them in between and then they're going to harden up. I did put something to catch the uh, sugar so it doesn't have to be necessarily scrubbed. Let's, um, I'm gonna do a little bit, a couple of each of these with the dip just because uh, I already have a little variety. So let me do some of these dip. So it's good, you know, when you make these, they're really thick, they're almost a little crispy. And I'm like, is that gonna be a good donut? But then after you coat them here, that is when they turn into nice soft donuts. So don't fry if you make them, you're like, oh, they're all hard. Because I was thinking that, I'm like, oh, that doesn't look very good. But now that they're coated, that is when they're going to be ultimate. You can let them sit for just a few minutes. That works. And hopefully they'll dry real quick. And I can use my racks for new ones. So I'll do, because I want to do some, we'll do like, actually how many donuts? Let's do four. Let's just do four of each one because there's 12, right? I think each one has 12. Okay, four of those, and then four of these. Easier when they're warm, obviously, but still, still good. Okay, this is good. So let's, I don't need much of that, so let me move these over here. I'm running out of space. Okay, so let's do, I just need another pan. We're gonna use, we're gonna have pizza things. Here we go. Okay, these are gonna be the sugar and cinnamon kind. Again, probably it's gonna work really good when they're not super warm. Hmm, let's see. Oh yeah, they'll still coat. Yep, they still do. Probably when they're warm, they'll stick a whole lot better. But look at it, it does. So I will do four of each one, actually, because there's the chocolate didn't make that much chocolate sauce. I just had like a melting chocolate, probably like chocolate chips would be really good. I just followed the recipe. The chocolate I made. Let's see how this goes. So I just did chocolate with whipping cream. And I made a nice glaze here. So let's see, let's see how this does here. Oh 
my goodness. Okay, lots of donuts. <laughs> it's one of those when you start going, you're good to go. So I ran out of the racks. So I just did all this in cinnamon sugar. So let's just try, since I need a big one, just try a little one. It's not hardening yet. These are good with the sugar. Okay, that's the yeast one. That's good. This is the old fashioned kind. The cake one is really good too. And then the chocolate. Okay, out of these three, I would say the yeast one is good, the best. Then the chocolate chocolate and then the old fashioned. So the chocolate frosting ones I did, there wasn't much chocolate. So I don't know how those are gonna be, but it's good. So I've got apple fritters to do, so let's go out and do those. Okay, so the deep, or uh, apple fritter batter, I'm not sure on this because it's like goo. So I thought I would do like my ice cream scoop and see how that works. If I just, not ice cream, but you know, this kind of scooper. Because they're like all different shapes when you go by and they're like, well, can we just do balls of them? I don't know if this is gonna work or not. So I'm not sure yet. This is gonna be a trial and error here. Probably like something long because that's how the apple sugar is. But I'm gonna like this. But, but the donuts inside, okay, happy with it. I don't know about the chocolate icing. I don't know if I love that with it, but I feel like dipped in place is really good, so. All right, let's say, okay, this just puffs up like a ball. Can we do apple fritter balls? We can do that, right? Okay, not sure about the apple fritters because they want to go like balls, obviously, not um, flat, so. Might have been the recipe. But, you know what, we'll try. I see how it gets the crispy from the basket on the bottom. So more like little balls of delicious and I'm just gonna dip drop them in um, the powdered sugar glaze when they're done. The um, apple fritters I turned it down to 350 because the other ones got a little bit darker. Oh they weren't but they're, they're like balls. So I need to know how to flatten them out maybe I'm not sure I obviously probably don't use ice cream scooper. But this will be good I'll go dip them in glaze and then work on the egg rolls. Almost done. Right, yeah I'm doing something different. Egg rolls <laughs> I'm tired of donuts you know, when you've been around stuff all day long, you just feel like one big deep fry. These are delicious. So I'm just gonna drop these in here, let these fry. I'm not afraid to overfill. We'll do five. Five, we'll go, let me go get my tongs. So some of these I'm cooking a little bit darker than others. As you can see here, these ones I'm gonna put away. Look at the bubbles on those. And they make the nice bubbles, the air bubbles are nice and crispy. So these ones are going to be obviously reheated, like in the air fryer. So that's why I didn't want to cook them all the way, but the darker ones we'll have first. So it's going good, doing great. We're clean up inside, getting everything done so we can be finished for our Good Friday. Last one. All right, done. Egg rolls are done. So some I cook darker, some I cook lighter because we're going to reheat those. Those are delicious, so good. The donuts, what a winner, what a winner. The yeast donuts definitely... Everybody's favorite. They say the, um, I'm like so, I'm so tired of deep fried. So the taste, I'm like, I'm finished, but Jaden says the apple fritters are good, so they're nice and squishy. So it helps to get them coated right away, I think, because I'm just pushing them, because then it makes them a little bit, it absorbs that and makes it, but when I do it a bunch, it's like, okay, let's just wait and get it done. But this is it. So a great day making donuts for my family. So I'm not doing any food for the weekend because we're going to be out having fun this weekend. So you have a fantastic rest of your day and come back Monday. We'll have another video for you. All right. Enjoy your weekend. Bye.